Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to make uh, financial more flexible by building out a rent roll with different rollover times for different tenants and uh, again just add more flexibility. It's a reoccurring theme in all my videos basically taking a spreadsheet and just adding uh, more flexibility and complexity to the model. So if we look at the assumptions page currently we're just collecting rent of $20 a foot and that's it and that $20 a foot and 10,000 feet is then flowing into a cash flow statement that says the potential gross revenue is 200 grand and we knock off a vacancy factor and that's it. Now of course in the real world uh, different tenants move in at different times uh, different tenants roll over at different times there's just well frankly more complexity so how can we model that? Well this is what we can do. I'm going to add an extra worksheet <clears throat> that I will call rent roll and let's build it out a little bit. Rent roll. And just so we can keep track of everything, I'll do a total square footage calculation, which will go back to the assumptions page. That's just me keeping track of stuff. And I'm going to have a tenant that I will call tenant one. And I'm going to put in uh, some months. So I'll put in like month. And let me just do current rent. And the current rent I will say is $20 a foot. <clears throat> and I'll make that dollars per square foot. And the month I will do month one, two, three. You get the idea. And I'll have that go to say, I don't know, month. 60 because we're doing a five-year model you know I'm doing a five-year model just because it fits on a page obviously I could do 10 years I could do 20 years but today I'm just doing five years because I can um, <clears throat> I'll put in the current rent I'll put in just a line called rent and then up here I'm also going to be ha um, also have market rent right so I'm going to have market rent and that's going to be the same period of time and we had a growth rate if you remember of income which was of three percent um, but you know when we say three <clears> percent <throat> I'm gonna have that grow uh, not at just three percent per year but at like well, 3% per year, but I'll, I'll, I'll have it, you know, be a monthly amount or something like that. So if I have the market rent and I want my starting market rent to be, I don't know, 22 or something like that. Right? There's 22. I'm going to have it grow a certain percent per year. In other words, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have the 3% apply every 13th month. Now, I could do monthly growth, but for now I'll just have it be a one-time adjustment of 3% every year just to kind of drop it in there. And that's what a lot of people do. But again, you know, it's open to debate. So uh, the market rent will be basically from month 1 through 12, just like that. But then at month 13, it will be 1, it'll be 1 plus the rate of growth dollar sign times the previous month so it goes to 2266 and then I'll have this be that way until month 24 and then I'm going to take that method from month 13 to 24 and I'm just going to bring it across so we should see that there's a step in month 49 and there's a step in month 13 and a step in month 25, and you get the idea. <clears throat> Every 12 months, I'm having the market rent go up. Okay, so the current tenant is 20 bu bucks a foot, and I'm going to have a lease expiration date. <clears throat> Pardon me, keep coughing. And I'll have the lease expiration be month, I don't know, uh, 18. Okay, and so then the new lease start date would be that plus one 
You may wonder why I'm breaking that out, but just bear with me for a moment. So now I got to do the rent. And the basic idea is up until month 18, it's going to be 20. And then at month 19, it's going to go up. So it's going to be like the world's dumbest diff statement. It's just going to say, look at the current date, month one. If that's less than or equal to the expiration date, then put in the current rent. And if not, put in whatever this market rent is, which in this case would be line C9. So uh, C17 is going to float. C13 is going to be fixed. C12 is going to be fixed. C9 is going to float. I close the parentheses on that. I put a couple spaces after the decimal. I drag it. It's 20, it's 20, it's 20. And then in month 19, it goes to 2266. And then again, it just kind of rolls forward. <clears throat> and there it is. Now, if I wanted to sum this to years, and I was just like one, two, three, four, five, because we need that, then what I could do is I could just do, again, rent. And there are a bunch of ways you could do this. You know, I like to do a sum offset. But again, there are options to this. What I like to do, and this is just me, is I like to say, start at C18, that's your starting point, stay in the same row, and then go over 12 columns times the year you're in minus one. In other words, in the first year, don't move. In the second year, go over by 12 columns. When you get there, highlight an area one high by 12 wide. And if I sum that, that makes that 240, which is basically, then I could just, if I wanted to, divide that by, oops, divide that by, Twelve, and that would be twenty bucks. And if I bring it across, we'd see that we have twenty dollars, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-four. Now, of course, one of the problems here is the new lease, which is starting a month nineteen, it's pulling the twenty-two sixty-six, and that's all fine and good. But then it's going up again. We don't want it to go up again. We want the lease to get signed in month 19 and then fix at 2266 we don't want it to continue to be linked to market so coming back here for a moment i'm going to modify this i'm going to say if the month you're in is less than month 18 then use that value otherwise instead of just going c9 what i'm going to do is i'm going to say if not then um, what I have to do is basically figure out when the month ends. So I'd say, in this case, uh, what you would do is you'd say, what's the new lease start date in month 19? So I'd do an H lookup. In other words, I'd say, uh, if we're beyond that part where we're not just pulling down the 20, I could do an H lookup and I could say, look at, look for month 19, that's the start date look in this table array, give me what's in the second position, close parentheses. Let me throw a false in there because you want an exact match. And then if I fix the location of the value and the table array, and I bring that across, it's 20 until it's not 20. And then it goes to 2266, and then it stays at 2266. This should be flexible. If I make the lease expiration month six, there it is. It's 20, and then it's 22 in month seven. If I make it month 14, we should see month 14 is 20, month 15 is 2266. If I make it 28, we should see that it's 20, oh, oops, if I make that, sorry, if I make that 28, we should see that up until month 28, it's 20 bucks, and then it goes to 2334. And, you know, one of the advantages of doing this sum offset calculation is you can see the dollar per foot is 20 in the first two years, and then it's blended in year three, and then there's a final in year four and five. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to put that back to 
month 18 and month 19. I'm then going to take the rent. I'm going to multiply that by square footage we saw up here. And so then we just have dollar amount, rent dollar amount versus rent per foot. Now, if I look at the cash flow page, we were at 200, 206, 212. It was just growing with inflation. Now, what I can do is I could link that to the rent roll, C22, drag that across. Eh, I forgot to bring this out to month 60. Sorry. Sorry, month 72 or something. So let me bring it out to month 72. And let me bring this thing out again to month 72. <clears throat> bring that over a smidgen. And there it is. We now have 200. 213 because that's the rollover year, and then it flatlines to 226 because that's the new contract rent with the new tenant. And we still have the I.O. period from the previous uh, from the previous part. I think it was part three or part four. And, you know, it's working as it should. That is a basic rent roll. Now, we haven't added in all the complexity we can. We haven't put in downtime. We haven't put in free rent. I haven't talked about tenant improvements or leasing commissions or anything like that. But at least we have a basic single tenant lease with a lot of, little bit of complexity. <clears throat> and I guess my final thought on this would be really twofold. One would be, I no longer need the rent on this page, so I can just delete that because I don't need that. And then also over here on this page, sorry, on the rent roll page, uh, I'm going to uh, just color code some stuff so it all flows through. I will color code that rent. I will color code the current rent. I will color code the lease expiration. And then everything else basically should flow through. Those are the only things on this page that are inputs. I'll press control, backwards apostrophe to take a look. And yes, indeed, that is true. Excellent. That is how you build a rent roll and give it a rollover date and a little bit of flexibility. Uh, in later videos, we can again build on this. We can put in free rent, downtime, all kinds of other fun stuff. In any event, um, good stuff. If you're interested in more content like this, or if you have any suggestions for additional content, please contact me at josh at carrealestate.com. There's my email address uh, on the screen. Also, if you'd like to attend any of my live classes, I run them every few weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. I also deliver classes on site for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about all of it on my website at carrealestate.com. Thanks again, and keep on building better models.